smoking a fucking joint with them guys. But I damn sure ain't telling them I'm not. I'm just gonna wait till they leave and I'm gonna hang out. God, son of a bitch! Fucking angry Hey, here's John. We don't. I'm always not sport aggressive. Welcome back to another non-judge metal. Uh, sitting around hanging uh, hanging out with the guys this week. We got Leo, Nick, and my buddy Scott here, and of course the angry Gordon's always coming back, having some drinks and having a good time this week talking about metal. New Wage War album came out. Angry, you had an opinion on that. Why don't you go ahead and give it to us right off the start? Uh, well, I checked out that new song. Not so sure how, uh, how I feel about that. Um, I believe you're talking about looking for an album to buy, and uh, I, I, I might go buy that album this week. But what you looking for an album to buy this uh, week? Something new? Yeah, I was thinking about checking out that Wage War, but like I said, I'm not really a fan of the new song. Uh, uh, Nick put it up online. I, I don't really know how I feel about that. That was that was Dead White. That's not actually the uh, the title track or maybe the best track on it. I thought that was my favorite from it, but I think Witness. What was it that drew you away from that song? I, I think that I'm growing out of the softer vocals. All of my metal here lately, I, I just say over the past year, has been nothing but the growls and screaming, and I, I just can't get enough of it. I, it's glorious mouth. Uh, the, closest, the closest I've got to like the clean vocals here lately is that new, new Trivium song. Oh my god, man. We gotta that. talk about the new Trivium song. Like, uh, incredible. I shared that on our page, like, I think, like, maybe 10 minutes after it, it was released online. I just happened to be luckily scrolling through and saw that they uh, had just put it up not, not a few minutes prior. It's a fan fucking fantastic. I mean, right I'll always have respect for Trivium, though. I mean, I, I wrote around a United soundtrack. Oh, yeah, wrote around a United. And he was one of the Ooh. team leaders on it. I know, we were talking about Ascendancy and whatnot. You got think. to play with, uh, with old, what, Mike Smith from Suffocation. Got to do a song with King Diamond. King Diamond, I thought you said King, King Diamond. El Nino, I mean, good stuff. Yeah, like, I, I'll, I'll always have respect for Trivium. Yeah, I, I definitely do, man. What, what, this, what is this we're talking about? Oh the Roadrunner United album. I know you've heard it. It came out multiple times, too. Have you not heard that no. album? Roadrunner United. I I know about it, but I, I don't think I ever... Liked it's 56 different members from 46 different metal bands of Roadrunner United record label, right? They all got together, what is it, 16 tracks? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, si yeah, it's like 16, I think, tracks where, where they just take all the musicians. They had like four team leaders, which was uh, Matt Hafey, um, uh, was it Dino from uh, Fear yeah, Factory? Yeah, yeah, I believe Rob Flynn, I think, was one of them. From Machine Head. Rob Flynn, was he one? Well, I know he was on, I know that the opening track is him and Howard Jones. Yeah, and I yeah. thought, I'm pretty sure I yeah, thought it was. Yeah, he he might have been on that one, and then uh, and then Joey Jordanson Joey from Jordan, uh, yeah. Slipknot. But yeah, they broke them down, and they they would just mix these musicians together, and they would make these metal songs that would take aspects from each of the different artists' bands and write a completely original song, record that shit, and just go with it, man. It was. It's fucking intense. The yeah. fact that you haven't heard that is a big wet fart on your fucking metal nice credit, shit. man. That's insane. I feel like I have. Metal homework this week. I feel like I have. It's metal, definitely metal, your metal, metal homework, homework this week. Like, like, seriously, if you get a chance, go on YouTube like, and watch the fucking video on the recording of it. Yeah. Oh, my like, God. Like, get into that behind shit. Behind-the-scenes video of these guys creating this masterpiece. And I know, like, the guitarist from Annihilator. Oh, God. On the first track. Solo, Dude, look at that dude, he is so fucking blitz when he's doing it, but like, I felt the same way he did while he's sitting there playing it while I'm just listening to it, almost, it's, if you can't really recall that, I guarantee, like, you haven't really heard it correctly, I Well, guess. I guarantee it's on YouTube, yeah. right? The yeah. video for it? Definitely, uh... still out of the loop here. Well, yeah, you, you need to be, and it's like, I mean... Oh that was kind of life-changing, man, because I already knew some bands that were on there, and I was like, oh, this is going to be cool, let me we're, check it out. We're and trying it showed me so many other bands that I hadn't heard of, Can and I got to get a feeling of, like, where they were, and... 
It's, it's crazy. It was one of those things that taught you to be non-judgmental in the first place, and you absolutely just. I, I I'm fat. Look, we got to quit talking about this because I'm feeling sick to the belly here. What Back to the Wage War that came out <laughs> this week. Uh, August fourth was its release date. Um, man, I gotta say, so far I've really enjoyed that album. Uh, Scott here, you you were uh, telling me about it, man. Um, yeah, it's really good. I I really like it. And yeah, yeah. They're one of those bands that just kind of I don't know, really kind of reintroduced me to like metalcore again because I kind of faded out of that. And right. They came around and they're just so heavy and they're so melodic at the same time they do it. So it didn't seem as heavy as the first album, though, in my opinion, just because it seemed like they really focused on that high pitched singer in every single song on this album. I definitely think that they they leaned into that more, but I mean, like, I, I feel like it's one of those things that if it's your strength, build it's build on to it. Strengths. He might have cut his man bun off, but I seen them uh, in May at that festival, dude, and they were tearing it up. And he he does they don't sound bad live, not know. at all. Even even with the uh, the the high pitched shrill, as you guys were calling it, I I personally like a lot of melody in my metal. Like I'm absolutely cool with it, man. Like I love the you know throw down this hardcore, deep guttural, death dastardly son of a bitch sound you can possibly get. In the same respect, though, man, like if you can mix those two things together and actually pull off a sound that's that that's not only cohesive but but works toward your your strength as a musician, like yeah, hell yeah, go for it, man. Um. I absolutely think that it's uh, that so far I I listened to maybe the first seven tracks off of it. Uh, unfortunately, with work I wasn't able to get to all of it, but I will say like I'm impressed. You mentioned Witness Man. Yeah. I think so far that's the one that really like, like that's the actual single yeah. off the album. But, oh, yeah, was it? That's what I'm saying. Dude. It stuck out to me earlier that like the second track on it. Did Gordon hear Witness, or did he hear just the one that I posted? That was yeah. Have you heard any more of it, Angry, or are you just being judgmental? Uh, no, like I said, that's why I brought up Trivium. Uh, I, I was getting into that Wage War pretty heavy, and then uh, Trivium just stole the spotlight. They just th that new song just blows me away, man. I don't know if you guys have kept up with Trivium over the past couple of years, but uh, I have, yeah. Their their past two albums, I guess Matt Heppy had something had been wrong with his voice on tour or something. I he like that last one. A lot of the scream. Silence in the Snow. Yeah, he, he's he's like, a, I liked it. He, he, he's the best metal singer out there, in my opinion. That's a, in my opinion. That's a heavy statement. That that, that's, that's, that's pretty heavy statement. statement. Have you heard them cover Master of Puppets by Metallica? That yes. and, and R.E.M.'s Losing My Religion. I have not heard that. Guys. Both of them are fan-fucking-tastic. <laughs> The Trivium is one of the strongest metal acts out there right now. We won't that, disagree. That heavy, I won't it's, disagree. A, it's a beast. And for them, I was just reading some of the comments on that video. Right. And it's, you know, people were talking about how everybody had complained about the past two albums. So Trivium put this out and they did this just to take everyone's heads. You know, and that's, that's how you feel about Trivium. Is, I don't know if you guys have listened to them since their first album, but their first album, every song you listened to, it felt like they were taking your head. You know, it was I felt that way about their first album. two records. Like uh, they they had some melody in them, but for the most part, it was a lot more aggressive. But I think that's a trend you see with a lot of uh, uh, groups nowadays. Is like you know, the younger they are, they're going to have a lot more of that angst and aggression that powers the music. And as they get older, you start to see them, you know, appreciate the the craftsmanship of what 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 they're doing. And and uh, you, you start to see the skill come out a little bit more in the songwriting, and 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 you can definitely tell that these people are learning, like the difference, um, you know, in, in, in what it is. I to think make you just it. can't yell forever. I don't think that's it at all, man. Because like, I mean, honestly, as much as I don't like Stone Sour very much, Judd Metal, I will say that like I was listening to one of the new songs, and Corey screams on this sound just as decent as they did back in Iowa or the third or first album. They, and they do, but the, the, that, they might not be as frequent. That, that brings me to another question, real quick, to interject, not to interrupt too long. But no, is please. Stone Sour Metal? Oh Lord! No. Oh, oh we were talking Leo. about this. Hold on. Leo said we, we've he's been telling you whether or not right. it's metal, modern we, rock, or gen. All right, we I got to it before we get to a discussion because we're going to hear what Scott has to say about uh, the Summer Slaughter tour. Something all of us are absolutely fucking jealous. We did not get to go to attend, but he did. Uh, I gotta have this conversation. You brought this up to me last night. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, pause what we're doing. 
APC. Like, the discussion between is this metal? Like, your thoughts? I gotta know. What, APC? No, just he was what talking about this. He said that you guys were having a thing like, what's the difference between hard rock yeah, yeah, and metal? That, you know, that, there's, there's quite a few bands out there that, you know, definitely have metal ties and <clears throat> maybe even metal influences, but it's when you get right down to it, yeah, I'm wearing like, a Weezer shirt right now. Yeah, I know. I love fucking metal. I, I love mean, Death I'm wearing my And, and uh, for what they are, <laughs> at times they, they, they're heavy, but not metal. It's not metal. No, not I'm metal. not going to tell you that Weezer's metal. Ever. You've yeah. always got it because I was saying Hash Pipe was pretty fucking heavy. I mean, it, some people could be like, well, <laughs> they use a distortion on their guitar pedal. And yeah, they'd be right. like, shut the fuck up. You're not going to add anything to my <laughs> shut day. Shut the fuck up. Mm. That's it. You I know, think this but, is metal. Shut the fuck up. If somebody says something's metal and it's not metal, that's your automatic response. It should be, shut the fuck up. Don't say anything or I'm going to knuckle fuck your cocksucker. You can't call things metal if they aren't metal. Wait a minute. Is that, is that what it's about? about? That's about where it's going. All right, well, I, I don't know. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say, in my opinion, I think that the difference between hard rock and metal is subjective. I think it's, yeah, I think it's down to individual. Subjective. I think it's opinion. Yeah. I don't think that there's a, no, there's, there's. Based on tempo. I just wanted to clarify, oh, you can't be judge metal if they're not metal. So if they're I, not metal, oh no, I think, I think I think Judge Metal is a frame of mind, but Judge Rock. Yeah, you can be Judge Rock. Judge, you judge can metal. totally be Judge, judge Rock. Rap. I'm judge sorry. Country. I'm sorry. I don't fucking like Nickelback. You know? I don't like judge Nickelback rock. either. All day. I don't like Nickelback either, went, but they're a rock band. But I do like certain rock bands. I literally bands. went with this guy, saw Trapped and Chevelle, and then, then left right before Nickelback played. I, I, I went to work. I would have. You remember Trapped though? People I remember Trapped. They I remember that. Before, 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 before you guys get into this, before you guys get into this angry debate, <laughs> I gotta ask: the difference between hard rock and metal. Let's ask the the the, 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 angry, the, Gordon. the, the, the angry Gordon, and let's ask our guest here, Scott. I like, what would you say the difference, uh, Scott, between hard rock, hard rock, and metal? It's there's really a fine line, honestly. The, yeah. Some bands you wouldn't really sit there and be like, they're metal. Like you listen when, when I listen to like bands like Ghost. Uh, and people are sitting there ghost, calling it. Yeah. I, I, I see why people call it metal, but I don't see why. I also don't see why any like anyone would call it metal. It's really kind of like really classic hard rock to me. Yeah, yeah. I would say uh, I would say Ghost would be classic hard rock. Yeah, but, I feel, but I feel like some of the metal or some of the metal labels though, like hair metal. Yeah. Now to us is considered classic rock. But See, like, that's what I'm saying. That's genre, why I think it's subjective. But the genre is hair metal. But Ghost has a real sound that kind of sound, reminds me of like Black Sabbath and, and things back in the 70s. I mean, that's what it's supposed to sound like. So I guess I can see why people are like, yeah. It's metal. Yeah. I wouldn't define it. See, as I've, seen, I've seen Black Sabbath live and I fell in love with it. Seeing it live. And of course, you know, I love it just growing up with the roots in metal. Like the sword. Hand. The sword. But would you, you, know? would, you not call, would you not call the sword... Metal or Black Sabbath metal? That's that's where bands. it gets into the real fine line. No, that's you know, I mean, for 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 what it for what it was in its day, that was metal. It's still, dude. It's still metal, dude. It's it's still still metal, metal, dude. That end last that 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 last like minute of War Pigs, that 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 riff, that sound, definitely. That, that, oh that, man, that rhythm. You're that never line, gonna you're never gonna tell me that's not metal. That line you're Long talking about, about, it's all it, it's all consistent tempo. I mean, I would even go as far as say like Motley Crue. God damn it, that's a tough one. They're metal. Motley Crue. I mean, it starts out heavy as fuck and it goes into the normal shit, but they, I mean, that that was hair metal. Motley Crue is metal as fuck, man. Motley Crue is metal as fuck. I think the difference between metal and hard rock is HCDC to Black Sabbath. You know, I think uh, if you ask the people in the crowd, it's about maybe three drinks and like is, you know a is roll, ACDC roll hard something. rock? Like, I guess so. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, AC. Uh, that, that I guess that makes sense. You keep ACDC out of my metal. Okay, that's that's a fair assessment. Yeah, I actually I'm destroyed. I don't know, man. I'm I'm okay. destroyed. I'm on the side. I'm on the side that ACDC may be metal. No, I, I'm not a huge they, fan of ACDC. They are oh, they're man. arena rock. Arena mm. rock. They got a lot of chance, you know. I think it was more or less they're like we're tapping into genres, and it's hard on me. I mean, it is, but at the same time, right. like a lot of their songs, when you get right down to it, are, are pretty much the same. Mm. It's kind of like Kiss. Kiss is arena rock, 
Right. They look Oh, metal. see, you've got me they, because you just, made me ha- you just made me have a judgmental statement because I don't, right. I don't want to consider... I don't want to consider Kiss metal. That's what I just said. They're, <laughs> I thought they're I were a rock. Like immediately when you said it, I was like, Kiss is metal. Like, <coughs> no, no, I my said, family started I hurting. said Kiss <gasps> looks I, Oh, metal. man, I hate to feel like, that way. Like, if you <laughs> look at Kiss, you'd be like, oh, my gosh, they look metal. And then you hear them, and you're like, this is the most... I know I've rambled on so much about, like, hey, you know, like, let's be non-judgmental. And the non-judgmental yeah. mission statement is, but goddamn, sometimes <laughs> you get so mad. No, look, we were talking about it the other day. Me and Gordon were talking about when we were coming up with the idea for judgmental minis. And we said, I, we said flat out, we were talking, I was like, goddamn, you listen to Machine Head, the more things change this week. Right, right Nick? Right. I turned him on in this record. This is an album before Machine Head's Burning Red, which a lot of the people in our generation grew up listening to. Now, before that was more thrash and groove metal, man. Didn't have that new metal sound. It's one of my personal favorite records until the Blackening came out. And I've loved the Machine. I love Machine Head. I think the last few records have been fucking excellent. But then they came out with that song recently. Is there anybody out there? Is that it, Gordon? Right? That's that one. Oh no! Oh my oh. God, dude! Judge metal as fuck, dude. It, it, like it's just garbage. It's not a good song. Like it's just like all of a sudden Machine Head just released this song out of nowhere that just it's just it's just not good. I, I don't understand it. Uh, it. It sounds exactly like the era that they seem to try to be escaping. I, and, and when I try to hear this, I want to I open my head up, and I want to be ease on it, and I want to go, hey, let's be non-judgmental, man, because there's something to like in here. And there's nothing to fucking like in there. It's not good. I'm going to check it out. From a I, I see a five-finger death punch co headline tour in their future. Shut, shut up. Quit saying yeah, such things, know. man. <laughs> Why you got to say shit like that? <laughs> You got a fucking crap on it. Rob Flynn had a bad day. He had a bad day. He had a bad day. He lost the bet, you okay? You like songs like that. <laughs> he lost the bet. He, that's that. what it is, man. He, he didn't need all the cake. He didn't need all the cake. Well, whatever it is, Rob, we hope you get better soon. When we came in here today, man, we, we, we kind of had a, a game plan going, going into what we were looking for, but all that got thrown out the window when we found out that our buddy Scott here had recently attended the Summer Slaughter Tour. Uh... I'm going to let him take it away and tell us about what kind of bands we got on there after the break. But what if your neighbor comes outside the house and they're just like, Oceano sucks! <laughs> Can you dance like your house on fire while listening to Oceano? Oh, welcome back to non Metal. We had to take a small break due to the Angry Gordon infuriate me for a minute so I didn't go out on a rage. Uh, so you were saying that you had uh, uh, blew off Oceano and uh, y- then you met up with Reflections. And what did you do then? I smoked Oceano's joint with Reflections. You s- I, don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, I can't be mad at him because Reflections is amazing. I gotta do but at the same time, it's like I wonder if somewhere out there a member of Oceano is sitting there thinking, why didn't he come back with that joint? What a dick. What a dick. What was it? They were waiting. If I ever dude. see that angry Gordon again, I'm going to fucking just knock him right in the goddamn teeth. Right now. The teeth. They were waiting. I was like, I'll be right back. Yeah, my car was like three cars ahead of their bus or something. I'll be know? right and back. I was like, I'll be right back. And uh, I never made it back. I, I even seen him standing on the side of the road. And I was like, oh shit, guys. Hide me. Somewhere out there right now, there's a divergence in time. Where he didn't show back up and Oceano quit touring and playing music afterwards. They were so disappointed. That and that that's yeah, just you know. Hey man, I, I believe in the multiverse theory, and I think I think it was just a, a huge fail. After that. Yeah, dude, they were totally depressed. You know, we're like, man, we really need like, to get you know, stoned. Our fans don't even want to come back with the joint. Yeah, they don't even want to walk back over three cars with a joint because this this guy he caught himself angry. What if they sat there and watched you smoke that joint with reflections and laughing and had a good time? And it was like one of those like SPCA commercials with Sarah McLaughlin playing in the background. Yeah. Just watching as that, that joint just disappears slowly in the lungs of another band. Scott made a single tear motion down his cheek. I, I felt the same way. <laughs> he's, not, he's not even going to come over here and smoke the roach with this guy. He's just get in the car. <laughs> nah, dude. He, Gordon didn't finish the story. See, he told me the real one one time. They're watching like, the Indian after you throw the garbage out of your car and you just see the Indian crying on the Dude, side of the road. He told me the real story one time. Yeah, after he finished that joint with reflections, he flipped the fucking roach at Oceano, laughed, 
gave them the moon with the fucking salad bowl, and then walked off. Son of a bitch. Gave them the fruit bowl, the fucking, you know, the, the, the twig and berries and all that. Yeah, don't let him fool you like he just ignored Oceano afterwards. No, dude, he flat insulted and antagonized them. He was like, hey, you're too heavy. Here's my nuts. <laughs> I was like, you goddamn kidding me, dude? So if we ever meet any guys in Oceano, don't expect an autograph because we automatically are associated with the Angry Gordon. So thanks from all of us here at Non Judgmental for ruining that. Mm. I hope you're happy. I've got to register where I live now just because of that night. Yeah, it's an Oceano offender. He gets a big red red skull dot right on his house if you go to the website. And every time you click on it, it goes. Grrr. As long as reflections had a good time, that's all that matters to me. Isn't it truly? Isn't it truly yeah. what all that matters? Because as much as we joke and jest much, here, as much as much as we have fun, so and, and and we don't take things too serious in the same respect, man, like. The honesty of it is, those guys probably didn't care, man. They probably found another fan to smoke with because, like, metal's a community, and we all we're all there to support and hang out and enjoy each other. And it's it's the one time that I think that people get along through, um, well, not one time, but you know, it, it's a time frame when people get along through all all adversity and, and you know tribulations in life, man. That metal community right there. So don't make excuses. Hey, no, I still think it's absolutely uh, apprehensible that he absolutely just walked by Oceano with a big ha, 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 to go smoke with reflection. You know, I'm not saying, and that was definitely judgmental on the angry's part. I'm not going to apologize for him. But. I hid behind the bus. He hid behind the bus. I mean, what are you going to do about it? You know? This guy who I've known to be a tough guy all his life, when it comes to Oceano, he was like, I'm not smoking a fucking joint with them guys. But I damn sure ain't telling them I'm not. So I'm just gonna wait till they leave and I'm gonna hang out a little. They were too heavy. <laughs> they were too heavy. Probably could beat me up. Saying, they just whip guitars out and start like throwing down riffs at you and then start hitting you with energy waves like it's some fucking anime and you're just torn a, torn apart by uh, all the power. It, it was it was the heaviest thing I, I I've seen, seen that. Yeah. I've seen that nod. Did you hear that? It was just too much. Oceano oh, too heavy. Don't like seeing them. It was incredible seeing them though. It was incredible. It was just like, <laughs> okay, what is this? I don't know. We like see a burning house, you know. <laughs> That's the fucking description. <laughs> hey, did you guys see Oceano Love? Nah, what's it like? You ever seen a house on fire? Dude, totally. Everyone's right, running out of it. They're terrified. They're scared. <laughs> it's fucking too much for them to goddamn deal with. But goddamn, is it badass? It ruins your life. <laughs> it's like it's like when I was here, Bob. <laughs> Did the vodka on the fire? Yeah. The shit as that the night was. When he saw the horns of Lucifer himself. Who? I'm saying Leo we had a sixteen year old birthday party and shit and somehow we got our hands on some of that old uh I think it was Canadian mist. No vodka. Well one bottle and the, the the cooler was vodka and I think the other bottle was some type. I don't know, nonetheless. Like, it's the night he pissed himself. Remember? Fuck, I don't it's a different know. night. I've, there's been too many. This, this is the one where y'all all went to the store, come back, Jeez. and this bitch was hiding in the tent. Who, you? No. And he's like, what? I was the only one that was there. He's she trying comes to out while, while I'm there. She looks in the cooler. A gal you were hanging out with? No, no. it was our friend's mom. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. She was like 16, shit like that. Okay. She looks in the cooler, sees the orange juice. What's this orange juice about? Hands right next to the vodka. Clear. But it's a clear bottle and it's in the ice. Doesn't see it. And then she looks at me and she goes, Where's the vodka? And I'm like, What vodka? If you don't see it, I ain't telling you. I'm like, What vodka? She's like, Well, there's orange juice. I know you aren't out here just getting your vitamin C. And I'm like, We're uh, uh, having breakfast. And we're just camping out in the backyard. She starts snooping around and shit, finds a porno. Starts ripping pages out and throwing them on the fire, going, Hard! Hot! Slap! I'm just like freaking out. Hold on, I'm by myself while they went to the store. They come back. She hears them coming back. She dives in the fucking tent and she's hiding. They're coming in. First thing one of them says is, Man, pour me a drink. And I'm like, No! And the whole time I'm like acting oh. real weird. I'm hitting towards the tent. 
finally, I'm like, I can't deal with this. I go right behind the tent, and I'm like, pointing at it, and they're like, oh, girl, how much you had to drink while we're gone? And about that time, she comes leaping out the tent, rips the bottle out of dude's hand, and pours the whole thing on the fire. 30-foot wall of flame off that motherfucker. Yeah. It was quite incredible. Sad. That's like Sigo Sean. There you go. That doesn't sound heavy though, like, we're not <laughs> drinking <anything. laughs> That didn't like, sound heavy though. Are you being non I don't know. Judgment. I don't fucking know. Story. This is a bad story. I don't even think we've got to be non judgmental this week, except for my tirade on non judgmental. When it comes down to it, like, I think that Angry Gordon's analogy for a burning house is the best way to describe it. And I haven't got to see... Well, you, you saw Oceana a few days ago. I sure did. But you love them, so I mean, like, is it a biased opinion? Like, or is a burning house accurate? I guess we'll never know. Except it's, a, in, it's very intense. It's okay. very in your face, kind of like if you were standing next to a house that was on fire. You're just staring at it. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Just in your face. You guys can't see Oceana this summer on the Summer Slaughter Tour? I'm sure they'll light your house on cool. fire and you know, you get about the same experience. Just play some of the music in the background while you're watching yeah, it. It's pretty much the it. same thing. You just stand there and <laughs> stand real close to the flame. Don't light your house on fire. Just go see your scene. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't. Yeah. Probably don't, don't save a lot more money just buying a ticket. As cool <laughs> as it would look and metal as it would be. That's your neighbor's don't house. Lights. Don't light your house on fire. About your neighbor's house? house? Yeah. What about your neighbor's house? What about your neighbor's house? Like, is that. I might be arsonistic. Don't light your neighbor's house on fire. You keep, you keep, your eye was doing a thing there where it was like closing and shutting real fast. Eye eye twitch. So so don't, don't not do it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not twisting your arm telling you to do it. We're just saying, hey, if you don't. But what if your neighbor comes outside the house and they're just like, Oceano (laughs) suck. Can you dim like their house on fire while listening to Oceano? <laughs> Are you allowed to do that? Molotov cocktails coming. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? From the That's when you pull out a coal chamber and a gasoline. Oh, we're gonna get into fire and the metal. I think yeah, we can. I think we can do an entire. I think we can do an entire month of a, of a winter plague. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can go through an entire uh, month of content if we're talking about fire and metal. Because I tell you, like the one thing I see at more metal shows. One thing I see at more metal shows than anything, and we'll go ahead and wrap up on this, and it's something that I can't stand, and and maybe I'm going to sound like a non-judgmental prick, but it's like, why do so many people have flaming skulls tattooed on them? Like, when you go to a metal show, like, I'm not not bad-mouthing tattoos, I have no problem with them, I'm not bad-mouthing a a skull. I I guess I'm not. Maybe I am. I don't know, man. Ghost Rider fans. True. Just saying. I don't think they are. What about Ghost Bath? Fuck that. Does Ghost Bass have flaming skulls on their album? Fuck if I or is it a flaming goat scream? I, 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 dude, I, I, mean, I, I just wanted to talk shit about Ghost Bass. Don't you talk? Don't don't you bring up oh, God's Mac, dude. We're talking about metal on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you'll just hear the massive willpower, <laughs> willpower of Ghost Bass just blaring over it. He'll just in, in, just cut out all the music and just dub that scream in over the show, and there we go. That's all we need. So, I got another. Does Angry Gordon have a problem? With Disturbed and Godsmack, because it seemed like oh yeah we do like that, bro. Was those was those albums? Did they move you? Do to you the light of angry? Metal or before we life? wrap up, do you have a problem with Disturbed and Godsmack? Yeah, real bad. Yeah, me too. So that's pretty much all we need to say about that. I'm just kidding. That would be non-judgmental. <laughs> yeah, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Cause I'm saying the sound of silence, obviously, like all the new disturbed shit. I can give you credit for saying that might sound a lot like. I didn't like. It, it was that metal. They got me into other That's stuff, cool. and uh, my, when we were growing up, being a little bit sheltered, my parents didn't know about disturbed. So that was actually kind of awesome that a little band popped up out of nowhere that you could listen to without getting yelled at. They couldn't read something about it because I mean it had the parental advisory and everything, right. but they're like, oh well, it's not Corner Mail and Manson, so yeah, you, you can have it. Here, get get this Slipknot, this look, uh, clown. God, man, I'm never. I'm glad. I'm. I'm so glad I never went through that. I'm glad that my mother never looked at an album cover and was like, oh, it had some sticker on it. Yeah, better not let it go. She was like heavy church going, so like during youth groups, like the, you remember the churches were actually having meetings about certain bands that were coming out, and they are like, this is the devil's music. They were, they were passing out lyric lists. Like, oh, yeah, dude. Like, I, I can that. understand what the fuck they're saying anyway. 
But, yeah, they knew what they were going to say, and they're like, this is horrendous. I don't want my child listening to it. And I'm like, ah, it's, it's metal. You know, you don't, you don't understand. Yeah, let's make sure your children don't have a wheel of their own. And stop their thinking process early. It tends to make raising them. I'll never never I can't look at people person. like that other one, like in any other way than like Dana Carvey's church lady impression. Right. I'll, I'll never sense what they listen, they listen to. I, I drive down the road rocking a tiller. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's all about like. I don't think it comes down to like whether you're a weak individual, but whether you're a you know uh, a critical thinker. Like I mean, come on. Yeah. You know. Like, like what you like, it doesn't matter what people say. If you if I listen to a song and another guy listens to a song and he hears it and goes, I gotta I gotta beat someone half to death because of it, dude. The song ain't the fucking problem. No, he, he just he, he needs a scapegoat. Everybody needs a scapegoat. You know. Yeah, I mean, you know, everything's interpreted differently, and that's that really was, that was deep within him anyway. Yeah, uh, I blame his parents. It's not, honestly, if we really need to blame yeah. anybody, it's completely we need to blame Angry Gordon because he's just been Ocean. I cannot believe it. Just skipped him. I can't even just dipped on him. Right. You might have to take away your talking privileges for like a few minutes. Oh my God! <laughs> I can't believe it. Angry Gordon skipped Oceano and he hung out and reflected. Now reflected ain't even around. They can't even thank him anymore. You know who's yeah. around? You know who's around? Angry? Too, too heavy, Oceano. <laughs> Better not go see him. Well, you can go smoke your drunk with him still. You can't smoke a joint with reflections anymore. That's a good so point. Fuck you. That's a good point. Yeah. He did actually. He just kind of defeated all of us in one sense. I smoked with them, and, and now they're yeah, not there anymore. What are you gonna do? do I smoke a joint, and I'm like, hey, do y'all recognize this guy? I know who he is. <laughs> yeah, we'll drag him in front of Oceano. Yeah, yeah, do you remember? We'll grab him by the scruff and pull yeah, him up in front yeah, of him. Tickets to the rest of your shows. They'll be cracking their knuckles like like 1950s, like, you know, dude, Greek. Dude, that like, was a lot of big dudes. I that's remember like, that that's guy. That's like a fat guy metal band. Yeah. That's what I got always root for. That's, that's another reason. See, I kind of felt like I didn't have enough weed for everybody when I was with Oceana. So. Oh, well, why didn't you just yeah. say that in the beginning now? We've been giving you shit forever about it because we thought you were an actual cockhead. Boo. Boo, boo man. Come on. Boo. You got all details, man. Context boo. is important. Oh, wait. I'm booing myself. Anyway, we appreciate. Oh, yeah, I, I don't know. Just, <laughs> reflections was better, man. I like reflections better. All right. Okay. All right. That's all it was. Then right, that man. you know what? That's part of the non-judgmental mission is to find uh, you know what what works for you. So you uh, you did that, and apparently it took Screw and Oceana to get there. So we'll just leave it at that. Anyway, we're going to thank Avery Gordon for this week for his uh, interesting stories and uh, his take on uh, wage war and his uh, terrible, unfortunate, sad unhappy, dirty, son-of-a-bitch, snake bastard, devil himself story about Oceano. We'll thank Leo and Nick again for all their awesome work. We definitely appreciate Scott for coming by and talking about the Summer Slaughter Tour. We are all fucking super jealous we didn't get to go to that. And If somehow I find a genie lamp between now and the 26th, I may be attending Cleveland's show. 25 bucks. The tickets are so cheap for this. I mean, I spent like yeah, 30 30 on. 20 or yeah, 25 or 30. I guess depending on the venue. But I think yeah, well, anybody listening, thing. check out the tour dates on it. If it's right. close to you, go check it out, man. Because I mean, that's just too heavy for one day. I mean, it, call out of so work, go heavy for enjoy. One day. McGraw, yeah, some people might heavy. not be able to get out and about though. Well, so just tell them you're sick. Just go. If I'm asking the show for, I'm not for coming into work today. I got the medal. I got the medal. If I'm asking the show for metal homework request. What about Scott? If you had like a possible request, metal homework, yeah, like, yeah. I'm just saying, who would you tell us to possibly do some research and homework? And Honestly, I'd tell you guys to check out the Capitated's new album. The Capitated's new album. I love new it. Album. Dude. I've just been listening to it nonstop. It's really fucking. Came out cool. July seventh this year. I, I admit it's I haven't heard it yet. They're gonna be. So they're actually gonna be at the, 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 the. Yeah, they're with the Artist Murder, Fallujah, and Ghost Bath. Actually. That's what I'm saying. That looks. That's actually uh, not the opening. It's going to be in Greensboro on August 22nd. Yeah, or oh, you see, he knows. He wants to go. I want to go. <laughs> I have listened to some of their stuff. Thoughts? Well, you guys may be hearing plans made right now, so we'll uh, we'll keep you updated on that because that sounds like. Yeah, cool. I was planning on going anyway, so if you guys want to go, I'm fucking down. <laughs> no. Non-judgmental like crew might be ticket. live broadcasting from that. So we definitely appreciate that, hearing about the tour and all that, So, uh, and we'll keep you updated. But. Appreciate you guys tuning into us, and uh, seriously, uh, fuck Angry Gordon for not, you know, smoking with Oceano. That's I just can't get over it. God damn. Seriously. Seriously.
And for that, Gordon, you probably need to invite some people to like the page and shit. Like, yeah, out please. Out of context, because that's yeah, that's your mission this week, man. You got to invite people to like Gordon, the page and share. Marth has to like the page. Yeah, Marth has to. You got to get Marth to do it. Maybe and subscribe on YouTube and shit. Yeah, I don't know if she has or not, but we'll share a uh, we'll share a uh, pretty song with a uh, pretty vocalist, and maybe that'll get her into it. Anyway, that's been uh, non judgmental. We will see you guys next week. Next week. Out. Fire. You know what? We will talk to you next time. This has been non judgmental. Oh, wait, he's going. Non judgmental. Be sure to share us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.